Should I lend Microsoft Power BI, W, R, Python, or Microsoft Excel for the first time as a beginner data analyst? Or which of the tools do you think is an ideal for me to start with? This is the kind of question that a beginner data analyst always asks. In today's video, I'm going to go ahead and address what tools or what particular tool you should actually start with as a beginner. To get started, you have to be some kind of industry specific. So before I pick the first tool you have to learn, let us pick two different industries. I'm gonna go with e-commerce and uh, HR, which is human resources, right? So if you want to work with this particular industry, you can find them using Excel, Tableau, Power BI, Python, or R. But the thing is this, you don't have to learn all of those tools to actually, you know, get a job in those particular industries. So what I would recommend is to start up with a soft tool as a beginner or somebody who does not have any prior knowledge about data or any tools. So even though if Microsoft Excel had been existing over 38 years right now, it is still one of the leading tool in any industry today. If you pick up Microsoft Excel, don't dab on the interface and feel like you're done with it within some couple of weeks or some couple of months. You have to spend some time, you know, learning this, right? And make sure you learn it to an advanced level before you move into a different tool. Let me give you a rundown on what you should actually focus on that will help you to pick other tools and learn it with ease. So the first thing you need to do is to learn Microsoft Excel interface. Learn how to navigate Microsoft Excel with ease. After you might have done that, you need to understand what Excel understands and what Excel does not understand. Knowing this will definitely reduce the numbers of errors you are going to encounter when you start writing functions and formulas. After you might have known what Excel understands and what Excel does not understand, it is time for you to learn about Excel functions and formulas. There are several functions inside Microsoft Excel. You don't have to learn everything to become a data analyst. Just focus on those ones that will definitely help you to complete your day-to-day -day activities. So as a beginner, focus on functions like sum, count, sum if, average, you know, lookup function, array functions, you know, there are several functions I've said earlier. Just focus on them and try as much as you could. Don't just learn them. Learn how to apply them on a particular project, which means as you learn every single day, try to create a mini project on how you could actually apply every single thing you have learned. The next thing right now is to learn how to clean and transform data using either Excel functions and formula or using Power Query. So Power Query will definitely help you to transform and clean data, then get it ready for analysis. Once you have learned this, it is time for you to learn the part of Microsoft Excel that will amaze you with ease, which is learning about pivot table to quickly create a quick, you know, report. So with pivot table, you can summarize data within some blink of an eye. It's just you to drag and drop. But to make it very much more interesting, you have to learn how to use functions and formula inside pivot table to customize it more and give you what you really want, right? So the very first time you actually created your first pivot table, you used what we call a denormalized table. So what is a denormalized table? A table that is denormalized has to do with a table that contains several, you know, segments. So let's say you have a table that has transaction, customers, products, location, category, subcategory, sales reps. This is what we call a denormalized table. And this is what um, you can actually use with pivot table. So what do you do right now? You have to learn how to work with a normalized table. In this situation, we're trying to work with a table that has a transaction table on its own. It has a customer table on its own, product, Category, subcategory, and sysrep table standing on its own. 
So right now we need to push all those particular tables inside Power Pivot, then create what I call connections between them using what I call relationships. So which means we have to learn about relationships right here or modeling. So this will definitely help us in other tools we're going to be using for our data analysis. You need to know how to write DAX, which is data analysis expression. So DAX will quickly give you that particular feel of, you know, aggregating values from different tables with ease. Not that functions and formulas wouldn't work with a, so with a normalized table. It will definitely work, but DAX would make it very easy for you. And it will help you to actually quickly grasp how to use DAX when we pick up a different tool like Power BI. So now that we have learned about, you know, DAX, let us look at how we can actually communicate our findings because nobody is interested in our backend. Nobody wants to know what is going on when you have clean your data, your functions and formulas, none of them is actually important to the end users. So what they are actually interested in is the output, which means we need to actually learn how to use chat to actually, you know, communicate what the end result should be. So picking up the right chart is very important. Learn about charts. This will definitely help us in other tools we're going to pick as well. So the next thing is for you to learn about colors. This might be a little bit difficult if you're just getting started, but this website here will definitely help you to do that. So just impute any color you want to use, maybe one of the colors you want to use and hit the enter key. This particular website will go ahead and generate, you know, different colors for you that will definitely match what you need. So now click over here and copy, and that will definitely give you a cool color palette for your project. So you can actually enhance your report or your dashboard with icons. So flat icon will definitely help you to do that. Okay, let's say we have learned all of this. The next thing right now is that we are not yet done. We need to create some couple of projects inside Microsoft Excel before we move into a different tool like Power BI. So pick up data from e-commerce and uh, human resources and create some reports around them by bringing every single thing you have learned together into that particular project. So once you're done, it is time for we to move into the next tool. And the tool I recommend for you is actually Microsoft Power BI. So why not Python? Why not R? That was because Power BI has a lot of relationships with Microsoft Excel. They are from the same company, right? So now we can actually bring in every single knowledge we have gathered inside Microsoft Excel into Power BI. So the very first thing you have to do when you pick up Power BI is to learn Power BI navigation, how to navigate Power BI and get what you want quickly. Next again, you have to actually learn how to connect to data using the different types of connector they have right in that particular software. So once you have connected to data, you have to push this particular data into Power Query. Have it cleaned and transformed. And this particular part will be very easy for you because you have learned it inside Microsoft Excel. So once you are done, push this particular data into Power BI and go ahead and create relationship between them. And this very modeling part is very easy again because we have learned this inside Microsoft Excel. So once you are done, we have to go to the report view and start creating visuals, but not that fast. Just wait a minute. So this time around, you have to learn about calculated column and measures. So learning about this will actually help you to do the right thing inside Power BI. So don't go after visuals first, Try to focus on what is calculated column, what is measure, and the types of measure, when to use calculated column, when to use measure, when to avoid either of them in a particular scenario. So go ahead as, as far as learning about um, filter context and row context. Then once you are actually done doing all of this, it is time for which to start writing DAX. So which means we have to advance the DAX knowledge we have actually, actually, you know, gotten from Microsoft Excel. After this now, we have to visualize whatever the output from our DAX is. So we need to actually visualize it. We're using the visuals we have inside Power BI. Remember we have 
length visuals inside Microsoft Excel. Even though if we have slight different with the one inside Power BI, we can still uh, go ahead and, you know, bring this particular knowledge right here to know the right chart to choose for a particular scenario. So once we are done doing all of this, it is time for you to start creating projects back to back. So don't, because you have learned Microsoft Excel, you have to dump that one for Power BI. The same data you have used inside Microsoft Excel to create a report, use it inside Power BI to create report or dashboard. The same data you have used inside Power BI, go back to your Microsoft Excel and use that same data to create something that will still refresh your memory, that will still give you, give you that particular, you know, sense of, you know, remembering every single thing you have learned without abandoning any tools down. Otherwise, you might end up forgetting most of what you have learned. So doing this right now will actually help you to be ready for a particular job in data analytics. So how about this? I believe this will definitely help someone. If it does, please do me a favor to share this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you've not done that.